the next morning, um, Professor Hawking arrives. Uh, we set up a press conference. There is press from around the world. There are hundreds of cameras there. Uh, we're on this large dais that had been set up uh, at Kennedy Space Center. And uh, Hawking steps up and he says, listen, and he's doing this through his computer. I'm doing this because I think the human race must go into space, that if we don't open the space frontier, we don't have a future. We have to become a multi-planetary species. There are too many threats uh, that are civilization ending that are potentially before us. Now, I prefer the optimistic reasons for doing it versus the dystopian reasons, but you know, let's uh, belt and suspenders here. And at the end of that, uh, I announced to the world that we're gonna go and fly one parabolic arc. We're gonna give this world expert in gravity 30 seconds. And that would be amazing. And ultimately, we had a plan that said, if it goes well, we'll do two or three. But before we go on this flight, uh, because it's gonna be an open channel of communication between the airplane and uh, air traffic control, we set up a bunch of code signals. And uh, as we're flying, the FAA gives us this block of airspace that's 10,000 uh, feet uh, uh, high between uh, 2,300 and 3,300,000 uh, feet and 100 miles long and 10 miles wide. And we're the only airplane in that block of airspace. And I set up with my head of operations three code signals. One, everything's great. Two, uh, he's injured and we're coming back. Or three, the worst of all cases, right? And we go up. Uh, we set it up. I look towards, we have, uh, at, I'm at Stephen Hawking's head as he's lying down and we're flying straight and level. At the other end at his feet is uh, Byron Lichtenberg, two-time astronaut uh, and co-founder of Zero G. And I look to the three doctors, the emergency room doctors who are on this plane with us. They've got their equipment there. They're monitoring his heart rate, his breathing rate, his blood pressure, his, his uh, partial pressure of oxygen. And they're like, Thumbs up, all looks good. Uh, we talk to the pilot and say, okay, let's go for the first parabola. And the way this works, we're at about 23,000 uh, 23, feet and the, going to a slight dive to pick up velocity and you can feel going into a dive. And then the pilot pulls up and to about 45, 50 degrees nose high. And as you're pulling up, you feel yourself getting heavier and heavier and heavier and Professor Hawking's body is pushing down against the floor. Now, we're inside this airplane that has no seats for the first 100 feet. It's all foam padding on the ground, foam padding above. It's, so it's safe. It's well lit. There are 30 seats in the back that everyone who had you know, donated to this flight is in the back strapped in watching this. And the cameras are there. Click, click, click. And Professor Hawking, as we come out of the top of this pull-up and push over to the top, Byron and I gently lift Professor Hawking into zero G, and then we pull away and we're watching him. Now, Professor Hawking has very few muscles he can, he can work, none in his arms and legs, um, a tiny a few in his mouth and in his eyes. And for the first time ever, I see him smile. And there's this smile that looks like the smile of a child. And it was extraordinary, it was captured on, on film. And as we start coming out of this parabolic arc, uh, Byron and I slowly take him back down and we go into straight level flight again. And I turn to the, uh, to the physicians and I say, you know, are we good to go? And they say, yes, he was perfect. You're good on the second and, and third parabola. So we do a second and third parabola. And uh, it's, you know, each time he's floating by himself longer and longer, sort of like just having this, you know, the best I could describe is a shit eating grin on his face. And we come back down and they're like, he's rock solid. He's doing amazing. I said, okay, let's do a few more. Now we had promised just one parabola. And so I turned to his two nurses who are there and who had been talking with him and said, what do you think? Should we continue? Because they said, yes, absolutely. And in fact, Professor Hawking wants you to, you know, twirl him around in zero G. 
And I'm like, I'm like, at this point, I don't know if they're like just trying to get back at him for something or they really had had that conversation. I said, okay, well, let's do this. And so um, the video footage, uh, which we should find, uh, has us basically lifting him up and spinning him around gently in zero G. So we ended up doing eight parabolas with Professor Hawking. Um, we get back, you know, the code signal is he's great. He did awesome. And we land and, uh, you know, he had not wanted to do a post post a post flight press conference because he thought he'd be too tired for this. And he was just so jazzed. Uh, and he said it was the most extraordinary experience of his life. And I remember I've gotten to know Lucy Hawking, his daughter, very well. And she said it was one of the highlights of his life. Uh, and it most definitely was for me. And I'm so happy we didn't kill Stephen Hawking.